A hash function converts strings of different length into fixed length strings known as hash values or digest. You can use hashing to scramble passwords into strings of authorized characters, for example. Hashes have three properties. They are one way. Once a hash value has been generated, it must be impossible to convert it back into original data. It must be collision free. For a hash function to be collision free, no two strings can map to the same output hash. In other words, every input string must generate a unique output string. Computation must be lightning fast. If it takes too long for a computer to compute hash values, the, pr the procedure is not much use. Hash functions must therefore be very fast. We will need Hashcat to be downloaded and installed on your computer locally. You can get it from the Hashcat website as we have an image of here. We'll download it and unzip it into its own directory. It is not a GUI interface, but a command line interface. So once you install it, you aren't going to see a icon for the program. It will always be run from the command line. Hashes are identified by a number in Hashcat. You can retrieve the number from the Hashcat website. In this example, we'll be using the MD5 hash, which is identified as number zero on the Hashcat website. I'm going to be using an online MD5 hash generator for purposes of this lab. In here you can see I typed in the word joy and clicked generate and it produced the hash. Even though the, le the word was only three letters, it produced a lengthy hash. In the second example, I'm typing out a much longer string of characters and then clicking generate. And you'll see that the hash is exactly the same length as the word joy. So this is a function of a hash where it produces the same length answer every time. Now I'm going to type in the word hockey, click generate, and this is the hash that I'm going to use for our uh, lab. I'm gonna copy that and I'm going to open a notepad and I'm going to paste it into the notepad and I'm going to save it into the same directory as my hashcat exe file. In the same directory, I have also put a word list which contains 1,000 of the top used passwords. In this list, uh, the word hockey is actually in that, and this is the word list we're going to use with Hashcat to discover the password. I'm going to open a command prompt and then I'm going to enter the following command, hashcat.exe uh, uh, hyphen m, which stands for the mode. I'm going to use uh, zero, which is the, the uh, MD5 hash. I'm going to use attack mode three, which is going to be called brute force, so it's going to iterate through the list. I give it the name of the file, clash hash.txt and the word list.txt that I want to use to break that hash. I execute the program. You can see it running here and in a few seconds it will uh, give us the solved hash. There it is. You can see up at the top it has the hash, a colon, and the word hockey. So this hash has been solved by Hashcat. In the second example, we're going to use something called a mask to solve the hash. In this case, we're going to run the same command, so hashcat.exe 
hyphen M. So the mode is again going to be MD5, which is zero. Attack mode three, so it's going to iterate through all of the uh, possibilities. And now we're going to tell it to use a character set. So our first character set, so hyphen one, and then it has a question mark and L, which stands for lowercase. So we're telling it to use all lowercase. We do know that the uh, hashed word is all in lowercase. The class hash.txt is our file containing the hash. And then behind that, we have a series of question marks and ones. Each one of those is a placeholder for the characters. So we have six of those representing six characters that we all know is all lowercase. And we'll hit the enter key and run it now. And the hash has been solved in just a little over four seconds.